In just a moment, enjoy my son Jeep. First, though, this week a group of your friends reached their 21st birthday. You visit with them each weekday over the station. Of course, we mean the barbers of one man's family. Yes, for 21 years, you've been sharing the happiness and tribulations of this lovable family circle. And you can continue to enjoy them Monday through Friday. You'll also enjoy your other weekday favorites, Bob Hope, Dave Garraway, The News of the World, and John Cameron Swayze. Now it's My Son Jeep on NBC. How? Is he Big Chief running? Whoa. I mean, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Dr. Robert Allison speaking, sometimes referred to as Jeep's father, and better known recently as Grove Falls' outstanding Indian chief. It was just one of those things, not really anyone's fault, but if you had to put your finger on someone, you could do worse than put it on my young offspring, my little Mr. Fix-It, my son, Jeep. Yes, it's My Son Jeep, the bright and warm-hearted adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls, transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company and starring Donald Cook as Doc with young Martin Houston as irrepressible, unpredictable, 10-year-old Jeep Allison. Some of the nicest moments around our house take place after supper. We all gather in the living room, uh, Mrs. Bixby, our housekeeper, Jeep, Peggy, Barbara Miller, who works for me, but who is like a member of the family. This is when we talk over the events of the day and plan the events for the days coming up. This is also when I usually get no inkling whatsoever of what's in store for me. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, everybody, I'm being installed Friday night. Huh? You're being what? Uh, Miss Bixby, would you mind telling us what you're talking about? I'm being installed by the sisters of Minnehaha. You know, my lodge. I've been elected Minnehaha for 1953. You mean what's left of 1953. Well, who's Minnehaha? She was an Indian princess up in Minnesota or someplace. Gosh, you're going to be a princess, Miss Bixby? In a manner of speaking, yes. Well, congratulations. Do we call you uh, your royal highness? Just call me Minnie. <laughs> well, I think it's a great honor For the whole family Congratulations Yeah, I think it's swell and The only reason I brought it up is I'm going to need some help with the costumes Costumes? How many are you going to wear? Just one The other's for Mr. Mooney You mean our milkman? Is he a sister of the Minnehaha? Oh, mercy alive, no What is he then? A brother of Minnehaha? He ain't no relation at all but every year when the new Minnehaha gets installed, she has to have a chief for the occasion. Well, what's he called? Chief Bottle Washer? <laughs> Please, Doctor. He's Chief Running Bear. Well, how come Mr. Mooney's taking you? Well, gotta have somebody. I saw him when he was delivering the milk this morning and I asked him. Mrs. Bixby, how could you? How could I what? Oh, well, don't you know the woman's not supposed to make the first advances? You were supposed to wait for the man to ask you. <laughs> Yeah, well, Peggy, when you get to be my age, you're allowed a few privileges. <laughs> well, you don't waste time beating around the bush. You get right to the point. <laughs> it was a joke. Well, I, I suddenly got the picture of Mr. Mooney clattering up the back steps and Mrs. Bixby saying, I'll have three quarts this morning. And how would you like to be chief running bear? Oh, I'm sure Miss Bixby didn't say that. No, nope, I ordered four quarts. <laughs> You mean you really, you really did jump in and ask him like that? How did he take it? Well, he balked a little, but when I told him what an honor it was and how all the refreshments was free, he gave in. Miss Bixby, what does Minnie Ha do? Do? Don't do anything except preside at the meetings. <gasps> oh, my land. Well, what's the matter? I just remembered uh, I got to make a speech. In Indian? Oh, of course not. <laughs> But what'll I say? Oh, well, that's simple. You just say, uh... uh Ugh. Well, no, no. You, you say, uh... Go on, Doctor. Well, you, you... 
Well, what do you mean, go on? I can't just toss it off. It requires little thought. Well, between the five of us, we certainly ought to be able to make up one speech. Don't worry. Leave the whole thing to me. I'll write the speech. There you are, Miss Bixby. Your troubles are over. Sure. I know all about Indians. Well, if you think you can do it, Jeep, go ahead. It'll sure take a big load off my mind. Oh, this installation means a lot to me. Well, it means a lot to all of us. Uh, this is a project for the whole family. We've got to make this the greatest installation the many ha-has have ever had. Here, here. Miss Bixby deserves nothing but the best. Who works harder and does more for other people? Now it's our chance to do something for her. Well, of course we're going to help Father. Barbara and I are going to work with Mrs. Bixby on the costume. That's right. And Jeep's going to write the speech. That's right. And Pop's going to... Hey, what are you going to do, Pop? Well, I'll be available for anything that comes up. Feel perfectly free to call on me at any time. Well, this is one project you can't possibly get involved in, Father. Unless you want to help with the sewing. Oh, so you think I have no use in this project, eh? Well, mark my words, before it's over, you'll probably be begging me to help you. <laughs> Please hand me the scissors, Peggy. Here you are. Thank you. You through with that sleeve, Barbara? Not quite. Well, as soon as you are, I got the other one basted. Mrs. Bixby, what's Mr. Mooney like? Well, then, say, child, you see him as often as I do. Well, I mean, what's he like when he's not being a milkman? Well, he's like most other men his age, kind of set in his ways. I wonder why he never got married. Maybe nobody asked him. <laughs> Maybe. He ain't bad looking. Nice, steady sort of fella. Mrs. Bixby, are you interested in him? Me? Mercy no, child. What gave you that idea? Well, after all, he's taking you to the installation. Now, the other way around, I'm taking him. <laughs> now, the lady's sewing circle hard at work, I see. Uh, <coughs> doctor, you're standing in my light. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. What's this piece of cloth? Honestly, Father, what does it look like? Well, it looks like half a sarong. It's Mr. Mooney's costume. Where's the rest of it? That's all there is. There isn't any more. You mean that poor fellow's got to go to the installation dressed in nothing but this half a sarong? It's not a sarong, Father. It's an Indian loincloth. Besides, that ain't all of his costume. Well, I'm glad to hear that. He wears a couple of bracelets, too. <laughs> and that's all? That's all. Well, won't he be a little conspicuous? Couldn't he wear a few more clothes? Nope, it's traditional. Whole ceremony is. You see, when Minnehaha and her chief enter the hall, everybody forms in two lines and we walk between them up to the throne. And then the twelve handmaidens of Minnehaha go into their war dance. Why? Because it's traditional. Then they kneel around us in a circle and I make my speech. Well, meanwhile, what is Mr. Moody doing uh, besides shivering? Nothing. <laughs> chief Running Bear. It's certainly the appropriate name. Yeah. Did you make up the name to fit the costume or the costume to fit the name? Uh, neither one, Father. You heard Mrs. Bixby. Everything's traditional. Mm -hmm. Well, all I know is I wouldn't be caught dead in this costume. What do you wear, Mrs. Bixby? Well, uh, this long skirt here and the moccasins and the jacket. Well, and... it seems to me your partner's getting a dirty deal. You're going to be all dressed up nice and warm. Poor Mr. Mooney's going to be freezing to death. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Bixby, tomorrow's the big night. Are you excited? Yep. I'm tired, too. Working on those costumes all week wore me out. Well, now that they're finished, you'll have a chance to relax, won't Oh, you? land sake, child, I can't relax. There's eight million things to do in connection with the installation. I'll be on that phone all day tomorrow. Are you people sure there's nothing I can do to help on this project? We're sure, Doctor. Well, everybody but me has been so busy the past three days, I'm beginning to feel useless. Hi, everybody. Listen, I just finished it. Finished what? The speech I wrote for Miss Bixby. What's this? Mr. Mooney's costume. Is that all he's wearing? That and two bracelets. Come on, son, let's hear the speech. Yeah, let's hear it. <clears throat> how? What do you mean, how? By reading it to us. That's the first word, Pop. How? Oh, 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 excuse me. How? He big mini ha Glad to be here. Glad to see so many squaws in wigwam. Ugh. 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 Heek big mini ha uh, Just a second. Uh, what's this big heap business? <laughs> <laughs> That's heap big. Well, whichever it is, I ain't a big woman. Golly, Miss Bixby, that's only Indian talk. Oh, excuse me. 
Minnie Ha Ha smoked pipe of peace with pale face. Silly, there won't be any pale faces there. Except Mr. Moon is. Uh, it doesn't matter. You always say pale face when you talk Indian. Sounds better. Where was I? Oh. Many moons ago, sisters of Minnie Ha Ha started Lodge. Ugh. Whole tribe happy with Lodge. Ugh. Minnie Ha Ha happy with Lodge. Ugh. Me promise bear meat and plenty buffalo in wigwam when winter come. Ugh. Great spirit smile on sisters. Ugh. Many ha ha smile on sisters. Ugh. Me promise all sisters who pay up wampum on time go happy hunting ground when they die. Ugh. How? <laughs> well, how'd you like it? Barbara? Well, dear, I thought it was very Indian. What did you think, Peg? Well, isn't the end kind of morbid, all that talk of dying? Well, gosh, no. All the Indians want to go to the happy hunting grounds. Miss Bixby's just saying that if they pay up their dues, they'll go. You know, come to think of it, no mini ha has ever made a speech in genuine Indian before. And how'd you like it, Pop? I'm very impressed, old boy, but it did seem to me there was one ugh too many. <laughs> Think so? Which one? Well, now, uh, this one right here. Oh, you've been a real help, honey. The whole family has. Don't know what I'd do without you. I'm all set for the installation. Got my costume, got my speech, and I got Mr. Mooney. Hi, Mr. Mooney. Hi, Jeep. Where's Miss Bixby? Pop made her stay in bed a little longer this morning. Rest up for tonight. That's right. Big shindigs tonight, isn't it? Uh huh. Guess you're looking forward to it, huh? Sure. All them free eats. Got to admit it, Jeep. I'm a man who likes his food. You are? How come you're so thin then? Well, I never figured that out. I keep eating and eating, nothing happens. It's kind of discouraging, or it would be if I didn't enjoy eating so much. Anyway, I'll bet you look real good in your costume. Well, sir, I kind of fancy myself in Indian costume. <laughs> All them feathers. You're not wearing any feathers. No, I guess it wouldn't be with buckskin breeches. You're not wearing any breeches. No? Oh, oh, got one of them knee-length jackets instead, hey? You're not wearing a jacket. Say, listen, what am I wearing? A loincloth. Is that all? And two bracelets. Now, Jeep, I've been up since the crack of dawn, and I ain't in no mood for jokes. I wasn't joking, Mr. Mooney. You mean I'm supposed to walk into that hall in front of all them women in nothing but a, a loincloth? And two bracelets. I won't do it. Huh? No, sir, Elmer Mooney's not going to allow himself to be made to laugh in stock of Grove Falls. Oh, gee. You mean you're not going to go with Miss Bixby tonight? That's exactly what I mean. She's going to be real unhappy. If I wear that there loincloth, I'll be twice as unhappy. But this means a lot to Miss Bixby. Can't help it. Got to get back on my rounds. Friendship is one thing, but making a darn fool of yourself is another. Golly, why did I tell him? Poor Miss Bixby. What will she do? She's got to have a chief. Well, no two ways about it. I'll just have to find somebody to take her. Come in. Oh, Mr. Mooney. Afternoon, Miss Bixby. I just come by. Of course, to... you come by to get your costume. I come by to tell you. You wait right here. I'll go get it for you. Hold on there. I didn't come by for no costume. I come to tell you I can't go with you tonight. You can't go. My brother over in Lakewood was suddenly took sick, and I've got to take care of him. But what am I going to do? I know it's awful late to let you know, but you'll find somebody else. Wait a minute, Elma Mooney. I happen to know you ain't got any brothers. <laughs> Did I say brother? I, I meant my cousin. He has to come over and take care of me. Take care of you? I thought he was the one who was sick. <laughs> Did I say he was sick? I meant me. Yep, I, I'm, I'm the one who's sick. You don't look sick to me. Well, the looks are mighty deceiving, Mrs. Bixby. Now, that ain't all that's deceiving. You're as healthy as you've ever been, even if that ain't saying very much. Now, let's have the truth. Well, if you got to know, I'm going to be sick uh, uh, tonight. Oh, you ain't even making sense, Elma. How can you tell now you're going to be sick tonight? I always get a warning in advance. Ain't no use fighting it either. <coughs> See? There it is. You realize you're leaving me high and dry, don't you? Can't help it. Ain't my fault. I got this sickness coming on. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's 
coming on faster and faster. I gotta get home to bed. Well, there goes running there. <laughs> now what do I do? Miss Bixby, there's something I have to tell you. And gee, what's the matter? You look funny. Mr. Mooney ain't gonna take me to the installation. Oh, well, that's what I came to tell you. Oh, a ball is silly. Exp How'd you find out? He told me. How'd you find out? He was just here. Oh, told him he'd look swell in that costume, but he just wouldn't believe me. Him and his sickness. Why couldn't he be man enough to tell me the real... Re costume? What about the costume? Well, when I told Mr. Mooney what he was wearing tonight, he got all upset. Oh, so that's the reason. Said he'd be the laughing stock of Grove Falls. But, but, but nobody ever objected to the loincloth before. I even told him about the two bracelets. <sighs> Guess he was expecting to wear more than that. My own installation. Ruined. I'm sorry, Miss Bixby. I didn't mean to scare him off. Oh, of course you didn't, child. Oh, anyway, it's water under the bridge now. Problem is, who am I going to get? That's what I've been working on. When I asked the mailman, and he's married. Went down to the filling station, but Mr. Rogers said he wouldn't get dressed up like an Indian if it paid him. Uh, well, you tried, honey. You can't do more than that. Guess not. Is Pop in the office? Uh-huh. Hey, I got an idea. And if it works, you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> you something? Naturally. What? Well, it's a kind of a, what you call a hypo, a hypo, a hypo something question. Hypothetical? Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, anyway, if there was a family, and there was somebody in it that everybody loved, and she was in trouble, wouldn't they help Miss Bixby out? Uh, you've got me completely confused, as usual. Uh, is this a hypothetical Mrs. Bixby or our Mrs. Bixby? Hypo. Uh-huh. And this uh, imaginary person's in trouble? Uh-huh. Shouldn't everybody do everything they can to help her? Certainly they should. Everybody in this imaginary family loves her very much. And you can tell her I said so. Gee, Pop, thanks. Think nothing of it. You want to tell Miss Bixby or shall I? Tell her what? Well, that you're going to take her to the installation. What? Well, didn't you say it would, Pop? I said no such thing, and you know it. But, Pop, what's she going to do? Mr. Mooney's not going to go, and she hasn't anybody else. Well, can't she ask around someplace? But the party's tonight. It's too late. Well, what's the matter with Mr. Mooney? Is he sick? No, he just doesn't want to go. Why? You, you wouldn't be interested in this reason, Pop. That's where you're wrong. I'm hanging on your every word. <laughs> what made Mr. Mooney change his mind? Oh, the loincloth. Well, no wonder. I don't blame him a bit. And now you come to me, and after beating around the bush for five minutes, you ask me to wear it. Oh, no, not me. But you look so good in it, Pop. That's your opinion. I don't happen to share it. I refuse to make a spectacle of myself running around in an oversized handkerchief. But gosh, that's the way the Indians used to dress. I don't happen to be an Indian. When we go to the beach, all you wear is a pair of trunks. The installation is not being held at the beach. But, Pop, wouldn't you at least try the loincloth on? The answer is no. Absolutely, definitely, no. Turn around, Father. I told you you had the build for it. You look wonderful. Well, never mind the soft soap. I look ridiculous, and you know it. No, you don't, Bob. You look very good. You'll be the hit of the party. Oh, no, I won't, because I'm not going. I don't know why I let myself be talked into putting this on in the first place, but I'm going straight upstairs and take it off. Gee, Pop, you can't do that. Oh, I can't, huh? Watch me. Oh, but all week, Father, you've been saying that Mrs. Bixby's installation is a family project. And you're the only one who hasn't done anything yet. Well, maybe so, but this is asking too much. It seems to me that I heard someone say, before the week's over, you'll be begging me to help. Well... We're begging you. That's right. Throw my words back at me. It's getting so a man can't open his mouth without... Uh, without... Without putting his foot in it? Father, there is no way out. You've got to do this for Mrs. Bixby. Well, I don't mind taking her, but why can't I wear more clothes? Because, Father, this costume is traditional. It's also chilly. <laughs> I got an idea, Pop. You know the red flannel underwear you wear when you go ice skating? and put that on underneath the loincloth. Well, that's a good suggestion, Bob. It'll keep you warm. The answer is no. Absolutely, definitely, no. 
turn around, Father. I, I like the effect better without the red flannels. Mmm. Aesthetically speaking, yes. But this way, he's a little more dressed. I know, but he doesn't look much like an Indian chief anymore. I don't feel like one either. I'm going back upstairs and take off this ridiculous outfit and forget the whole thing. Oh, but you can't do that, Father. You've promised. I didn't promise to provide the sisters of Minnehaha with an evening of laughs. When next you see me, I shall be wearing trousers. I'll probably never take them off again as long as I live. Pop. What? You want Mrs. Bixby's whole evening spoiled? Well, of course I don't. Oh, all right. Stop making me feel like a heel. I'll go. And I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time, too. <laughs> I'll bet they said the same thing to Joan of Arc as they were tying her to the stake. <laughs> Just one thing, though. Now that you're wearing the red flannels, your, your face looks awfully pale. I got an idea. We'll make Pop's face up so it matches the red flannels. The answer is no. Absolutely, definitely, no. A little more on the forehead, G. Up here? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget the back of his neck. Is he dark enough yet, Barbara? Um, well, he's not as red as the flannels yet, but he's getting there. Hey, 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 what's that trickling down the back of my neck? I'm sorry, Pop. Got too much water on the sponge, I guess. Hey, what is this stuff, anyway? Red ink? Oh, honestly, Father. No, it's the makeup I use when I played Pocahontas' father in the Thanksgiving play. What do I look like, Barbara? I mean, truthfully. Oh, interesting. You can take the towel off now, Pop. I'm through. I wish I was. Hmm. I have to admit it, Chief. You did a good job. Yeah, you sure did. Feels like I was wearing a mud pack. <laughs> Gee, I was just thinking. Too bad I can't dress up like an Indian and go with you. You can take my place. You could go as, as little Chief Get Father in Soup. <laughs> well, I'm ready. How do I look? Oh, my goodness. Who's that? Oh, oh, Doctor. Oh, for a second, I didn't recognize you. That's the first ray of hope I've had. <laughs> Maybe nobody at the installation will recognize me either. Well, you look wonderful, Mrs. Bixby. <laughs> you like it, Barbara? Very much. You'll be the best-dressed mini-ha-ha your lodge has ever had. Gee, Miss Bixby, you look like a real princess. Oh, uh, do I, Jeep? Oh, Doctor, I can't tell you how grateful I am for your going with me. I know how you hate the idea. No, no, I don't. Not at all. I, I simply feel a trifle self-conscious. After all, I've never gone to a social gathering in my underwear before. Well, I, I guess we're all ready to go. All right. Jeep, will you get my coat? You can't wear a coat, Pop. Why not? It's cool outside. I, I'm not going like this. Oh, don't worry, Doctor. I got a blanket for you. Here. Well, you, you expect me to... Yeah, all right. I'll put it around your shoulders, Father. I'll never forgive that, Mr. Mooney, that coward. I have half mind to find another milkman. One will be a little more cooperative. Well, let's get out of here. You two have a good time. And don't worry about getting home early. I'll stay with Peggy and Jeep until you get back. Night, Pop. If anybody wants to know who painted your face, don't forget to tell them it was me. Well, don't look so unhappy, Father. You'll be the most attractive man in the place. And the only one. <laughs> is, is there a back door to this hall we can sneak into? Well, there is not. We're going up the front steps like everybody else. Well, I just thought I'd ask. One thing I forgot to tell you, Doctor. When last year's Minnehaha hands me the wampum belt, that's when I make my speech. Then I hand the wampum belt to you, and you've got to make a little speech, too. No. Well, it ain't a real speech, Doctor, just a few words. No, absolutely, definitely, no. Did you make the speech last night, Pop? Yes. What'd you say? I don't remember a single word. The whole evening is just one unpleasant memory. Let's talk about something else. Gee, are she even going to tell me about the party? Well, how can I? It was one long blur. Never felt more ridiculous in my life. People staring at me all night. You know something? Those red flannels itch. <laughs> the things I go through for this family... Hey, you didn't wash all the makeup off, Pop. There's still some on your right ear. I left that there purposely, a reminder to confine my future insanities to the privacy of my own home. No, why? Well, they've got a picture of you and Mrs. Bixby on the front page. Gosh, they have? Oh, no. Now everybody in town will be laughing at me. Oh, how dare they publicize my disgrace? I'll never live it down. I ought to sue that editor, that knuckle-headed nincompoop. But it's a very good picture, Father. Yeah, I'll bet it is. Robert Allison, doctor and part-time Indian chief. 
Don't you want to see it, Pop? I do not. Very well. I'll cut it out and put it in my scrapbook. Well, hey, well, where, where, where are you going with the picture? Don't you think I want to see it, too? But, but you just said... Oh, you know how Pop is when he's upset. Well, it really is a very good picture, Father. Well, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> well... Gee, it is a good picture. You look terrific, Pop. Well, it isn't too bad, is it? <laughs> and listen to what the paper says about you. Um, Dr. Robert Allison, one of our fair city's younger medical men, played chief running bear to Mrs. Henrietta Bixby's mini ha ha and carried the whole thing off beautifully. Well. He, he looked every inch the Indian brave, the handsomest chief the lodge has managed to snag in 22 years of installations. Well, oh. wow, wait, Pop, aren't you proud? Oh, well, who cares what the newspapers say? Uh, read some more, Peggy. <laughs> The traditional chief's costume was augmented for the occasion by another garment which shall remain nameless. Uh, ye editor applauds Dr. Allison's good sense and foresight. He will probably be the first chief who doesn't wind up with a bad case of influenza. Well, that editor's a bright young fella. I must look him up sometime. Oh, my goodness, that phone's been ringing ever since we got up this morning. Oh, by the way, Miss Bixby, have you seen the morning paper? Have I seen it? I just called up and asked him to send over ten more copies. Oh, good idea. Leave a couple in the office for the patients. Can I have one to take to school, Pop? Well, I don't see why not. Well, I'll take this one for my scrapbook. Land's sake, Doctor, you wouldn't believe all the nice things everybody's saying about you. Uh, really? Oh, half the lodge has called up already to congratulate me and bringing you and, and to ask you to the picnic this summer. Well, I think that could be arranged. I never saw anybody make such a big hit before. And in that speech you thought up on the spur of the moment, oh, everybody loved it. What did you say, Father? Oh, a little of this and that. But, well, what? Well, uh, I don't remember. Anyway, Pop, we're sure proud of you. We certainly are. And there ain't no doubt about it, it was the most successful installation any mini ha ha ever had. Well, that just goes to prove that if you accept a social obligation, don't make a fuss about it. If you go into it with the right attitude and spirit, you're bound to come out all right. My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendrick and directed by Dan Sutter. Tonight's cast featured Lynn Allen as Barbara Miller, Joan Laser as Peggy, and Leona Powers as Mrs. Bixby with Cameron Andrews. And introduced young Martin Houston as 10-year-old Jeep. Starring in the role of Doc is one of America's finest actors and most versatile comedians, Donald Cook, currently starring in the Broadway hit, The Moon is Blue. And now, this is Fred Collins inviting you to be with us again next week, same time, same station, for another transcribed visit with radio's number one family, the Allisons of Grove Falls and my son, Jeep. Tonight, it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show on NBC.